this stuff. So, most welcome, and I'm glad to see you all. Fun times, fun times. Yeah, sweet. Uh, so, just a quick introduction as to who I am, uh, partially so that you know what kind of questions you can ask me and uh, when you should probably ask someone else. Um, so, my name is CCP Fox4. Uh, I've been, uh, or I am a game designer right now. Uh, I've been with CCP uh, for almost two years. It'll be two years this June. Um, I, when I got to CCP, I started on EVE. I was on EVE for about six months. Then I was on Dust for about a year. And now I'm back on EVE as of uh, December, I think is when I switched, to, switched back. Uh, and before joining CCP, I did what most of you guys are doing uh, in my spare time. So uh, it's kind of where my passion and for getting involved in this stuff at CCP came from. Uh, this session is primarily going to be focused on giving you guys an update uh, as to where we are with all of our different tools that we give you guys. Things such as the image export, uh, the static data export, uh, the WebGL project, uh, the Eve API, public crest, uh, and also because who doesn't like them, give you some graphs and stats on certain things, uh, tell you about some stuff that is upcoming, uh, and then take a whole lot of time to answer questions. So. The image export. Where are we with this? What has been done? Uh, this is about all I have to say about it. Um, we did some work on it internally. Uh, it's faster for us. Uh, and if we do need to touch it, the code is all much better and nicer and whatnot. Uh, but there's nothing that's, as far as you guys are concerned, happening with it anytime soon. The static data export. Um, it's doing pretty good. We are continuing to move internally to what we call uh, FSD. Uh, which for you guys primarily means uh, we're adding more YAML files to it uh, and a little bit less SQL stuff. Uh, there will be a bunch of changes to it this summer with the all the industry changes. Um, we will be uh, dropping some tables, adding more YAML stuff, as I said, and whatnot. So uh, I can't give you details on that uh, quite yet. We'll try and get those details to you uh, before we release the summer expansion. Um, but just as a heads up, there will be some changes there. Uh, and yeah, as I said, expect some tables to drop and more YAML files. So uh, I also had a bit of a question that I put in the slide, uh, but then was answered on the forums. Uh, apparently, you guys are missing the dogma effects table. It's just not there. Uh, so um, I'll talk to some people and see if we can get that and why it's not there. Uh, the WebGL project. Uh, hmm? I asked people, uh, I asked everyone that was sort of involved with it, uh, and this was sort of the answer I got. So I'm forwarding it on to you guys. Uh, I mean, as I said, I was just going to try and give you an update on it, as much stuff as possible. The EVE API. Uh, yes, it is in absolutely fantastic shape right now. Um, sorry. Uh, at least since I've joined the company um, almost two years ago, it's in the best shape it's been since I joined. Um, we have a much better deployment pipeline for it right now. We can very, very easily push out uh, changes to the API. Um, I mean, the other day I pushed out some changes because there was a problem with the caching in absolutely minutes. It was great. Um, the response time on the API is down uh, almost 50 milliseconds right now. So it's not just on our side, but for you guys, it is performing much better right now. Uh, there is some effort going into the API right now. Um, there's things that have happened recently and some upcoming things, so it's always good. Uh, we have much better monitoring internally for it right now, uh, and we are monitoring it, so that's always cool. Uh, and our internal documentation is, uh, thanks to CCP Prismax, um, much, much better right now. It's very easy for, if another developer wanted to, to come along, sit down, and get going on it uh, just by following some wiki pages. It's great. Um, so continuing on the EVE API, some recent things that have happened with it. Uh, if you guys, uh, you know, haven't noticed, because uh, basically I just make some forum posts, so you might not have noticed. Um, we added a new endpoint, uh, slash E slash owner ID. It'll take a comma delimited list of names and return the uh, owner ID and most importantly the group ID for it. If you tried to use the character ID endpoint uh, that we have, it would return you the character ID, even if it was a corporation. 
Uh, so if you're trying to convert a name to an ID, you had no idea where to go to get more information about that thing. So that's what this will do for you. Uh, we added the character affiliation endpoint. Uh, this is something that where you can give it a common delimited list of IDs, and it'll tell you what corporation, alliance, faction those characters belong to, uh, instead of having to go all over the place uh, or do it one at a time. Uh, that's a little bit out of date, but yes, I added faction and alliance information in as many places as possible. Uh, and um, added the name in, not just the ID, so you don't have to do a whole bunch of extra lookups. Um, hopefully you guys are caching this information anyways, but it's there if you need it. Uh, if you're looking at your corporation's wallet transactions, uh, you can now, and you have dust members, you can get information about that. Uh, that is on account key 10,000. Uh, so that's there as well now. Victory points have been added to the faction uh, warfare information. Uh, we'll give you a list of all the systems involved in Faction Warfare and what the status of them is. Uh, and we added the victory points to that so you now know how contested certain systems are. And you also know how much of an influence Dust is having on Faction Warfare. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the character sheet uh, slash char slash character sheet uh, always returned a cache time of exactly the time you requested it. Uh, and this is, yeah, there was a less than sign instead of greater than sign. It was great. <laughs> yeah. uh, the API and bans. When do we ban you? How many requests a second can you do? Uh, I've seen this question come up a few times on the forums recently, so I thought I'd give it a bit of a shout out. Um, I want to point out that these numbers are not necessarily exact science uh, as far as our banning is concerned. If you go up, if you do a bit of burst and whatnot, uh, you should be okay. Um, so these numbers are not exact. If you go, you know, yeah, they're not exact. Uh, you should be good, though, at 30 requests a second, and we should not, you should be fine. If you go above 30 requests a second, we very well will probably ban your IP. Um, we are happy to whitelist you, though. Uh, if you contact us and say, hey, I'm doing a whole lot of stuff, here's the reason, and it's a good reason, we're more than happy to uh, do something about it so you're not getting banned. Um, and then... The way we do caching is, uh, so most of you are probably not familiar with how we do our caching on the EVE API. And I'm bringing this up because someone posed a very interesting problem, and it was because they didn't understand our caching. Uh, most importantly, what you need to know is obey the cache times. Uh, just please, please obey the cache times. And here's why. We don't cache the pages. The, pa the XML pages are not what are cached. We cache our DB calls. Uh, what this means is that some of our pages have multiple DB calls that are cached separately. So as an example that was this problem, someone had a member join their corporation, then that member's roles were cached differently than their corporation information. So the person joined their corporation, but still, as far as the API was concerned in our cache, still had director roles from their pre previous corporation. So their tools automatically granted them director level access to their forums, TeamSpeak, and everything uh, because they did not obey the, the cache times. So do that. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of all of that fun nonsense. Next, we're going to go on to some graphs and stats and fun stuff. So this first graph, this is a fun one. Uh, this is our throughput on the EVE API for the last three months. Uh, You'll notice that it sit around 100,000 requests a minute for quite a long time. Uh, and then it drops off pretty dramatically uh, about a month and a half ago. We asked Yvonne to make a little bit of a tweak, and that's what we got. That was great. Yeah. It was one of those things that sort of, because Yvonne grew sort of organically, we didn't realize that there was a specific problem. So uh, related directly to that, this is, without names assigned to it, because I'm terrible, uh, the colors represent different endpoints. So you'll notice that specifically, pretty much only one endpoint was causing all of that load. It's great. Uh, again, thanks for that fix. This is a little bit uh, interesting as well. This is our error rate on the API. Uh, we used to get like an alert like every half an hour that the API was over 5% uh, error rate. And it just went on for months and months and months. And then Yvonne made a fix, and we were all happy. <laughs> Our inboxes were very, very happy, actually. Uh, but a net result of all of this, 
the other, the other, the second drop is a second fix Yvonne made for us. <laughs> Not really their fault. It's our fault for uh, this stuff. So they were just being very nice in fixing things that uh, for us. Uh, this is the response time on the API. As I said, we went from about 250 milliseconds down to 200 at about the same time. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Um, and so this next one, uh, these are the top user agents on our API right now, which is Evemon and uh, Aurora, the Android app, and Zed Killboard's on there, and the terrible, terrible person that is Kriba. Um, the, the funny thing about this is it looks very different than our uh, the top IPs on the uh, API, uh, because Evemon is a distributed application, right? So uh, I do want to point out that it please include a user agent. If something goes wrong with your app and we're going to ban you, we'd very, like, we'd very much like to contact you and tell you why we're banning you. Uh, so if there's some way for us to know who you are, it's great. Um, we've had uh, NullSec alliances have their, all their services and their caching layer failed. They had no idea. We wanted to ban them and then they were going to get mad at us because we banned them and like, just tell us who you are. Uh, we're not, we try to be nice people. This is not a three-month period like all my other graphs. This is a 24-hour period of time. Uh, the endpoints, the average request per minute for those endpoints, uh, and then on the, that's on the left. On the right is the uh, wall clock time that is spent uh, on those endpoints. Uh, interestingly enough, it's, uh, I have it in my note there, <laughs> skill queue and mail messages are in the same position on both sides, uh, on both those charts. Random, useless, fun. So, uh, I had this listed as an upcoming thing because it was an upcoming thing when I wrote the presentation. Uh, it's no longer an upcoming thing. Uh, planetary interaction information uh, is now in the API. It was deployed on Tuesday. I deployed that. Yeah, Tuesday. Uh, so that's all there. Uh, there's four endpoints for that. Uh, those are them. Uh, there's a lot more information on the forums if you want to go and check that out. Uh, but that's the basics of it. Um, the funky thing about PI, uh, you're not going to get sort of the information you're necessarily expecting. With PI, we only update the database when you look at your PI installations, your PI setups. So if you don't look at your PI setup, this this endpoint is not going to change. The information return is not going to change. Uh, so you're going to have to do uh, some funky stuff if you want to do anything cool with it. But you can. the first thing you can do is know when your extractor control units are going to expire. Have a notification, hey, I need to go update my planets. Uh, so that's there. That's cool. Um, someone's phone that's okay uh the next thing that's upcoming this is this is done i just need to get it out um pocos uh poco information for your corporation will now be in the api um slash corp slash customs offices pretty simple uh it'll all be uh, you'll still need the same asset list uh access mask uh on the api key uh, it'll return an item ID, a system ID, and uh, all the settings for it, the standings levels that are set for it, all that sort of information. I cannot tell you which planet it's at, but I give you an item ID, so go look up the XYZ and figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. You can do that for po for bosses, like um, uh, effort. Um, I'm debating right now exactly I need because I haven't looked at what you need to see this information in the client. Uh, I don't know if you need director or CEO. To uh, but I might put that on there. I don't know. Figure it out. Um, on to public crest. That's all Eve API. So public crest. Uh, it's a thing. It exists. And it sees some usage. Uh, when I say some usage, it's averaging about one request per second, which is not, you know, not nearly as much as the Eve API, but it's there. Uh, and the server that runs it idles at around 99.9% .9 idle CPU. It's great. Uh, recent things with public crest. We added incursions uh, to it. We added alliances to it. Uh, slash alliance ID for more information. Uh, you can get kill mills through the crest link. You can get the link uh, from a kill mill in the client. Dump it there. You get all sorts of fancy information. It's great. We had market data, uh, historical market data specifically. Uh, so this is 
exactly what you see in the client when you look at uh, price history for something on the market and you see that table or the graph. It's exactly what we're exposing here, minus today's date. We'd never include today's date in this return. Um, and I don't have nearly as many graphs for public crest as I do uh, for the Eve API, but we have this one, uh, which uh, just shows you where the usage on the API is coming from, which is you know, almost entirely on one endpoint. This is a 24-hour period of time, is what this should have been. Uh, upcoming things. This is, I haven't really told people about this. Uh, internally, they know, not you guys, though. Um, we're going to expose wars through public crest because wars are public in the game. We may as well expose them here, right? Uh, so what will you get with this? You will get slash wars, and this will include a paginated list of all wars all the way back to war ID number one, the first war in EVE. Uh, I will point out that when you go back past a certain date, the data does get a little funky. Apparently, all wars before a certain date are mutual. Huh? Everyone was real friendly back then and just wanted to kill each other for fun, right? Uh, slash war ID will give you uh, all the details for the war. Um, and when I say all the details, I mean exactly what you'd expect to see in the client. When the war was declared, when it was canceled, who declared it, who the defender is, allies, uh, if destroyed, ships destroyed, all that sort of stuff. And you're also going to get this endpoint. Every kill related to a war is public information in the client. So there it is. It'll be there. Um, this, again, only begins at a certain time when we started tracking it in the client. Uh, you're in the on the server in the in Eve. Um, so if you go back a certain ways, you won't get anything there. But uh, on anything new, it'll be there, and all the words will be there. When I was doing this, and I was trying to figure out how many kill mills can I link on this page on this resource uh, before I have to start going to page uh, to pages, and I was thinking, well, maybe maybe I can get away with just doing a straight list of like just a dump here's all the kill mills related to that uh war uh that gets very big and so this is kind of not really related to anything it's just fun stats so i included it um here's the top 30 wars in terms of number of kill mills related to that war and it's all blanked out right now and we'll get to that so if we look at the top 20 or not the top 10 but the next 20 it goes from about 1,400 to 3,200, and at that number, I'd be very happy returning just a straight dump of all those kill mills. However, then we go up to this, and we get to 36. Still, okay, not bad. 38, mm -hmm. 47, now, nah, okay, maybe we should just paginate it, right? 6,200, yeah, okay, fine, fine. 8,000, 8,200. And then, this is where I start hating RVB. Also, apparently, people like to pick on brave newbies. Poor guys. Uh, so again, those will be the three endpoints once I get them out. Um, you'll notice I've been very careful not to include any dates on this stuff, this upcoming stuff. Uh, and that's because I'll, I'll get it out as soon as I can get it out. But uh, I'm not going to try and give you a date and then lie. So more upcoming things. When I say more upcoming things, this is stuff I haven't done yet uh, or that no one at the studio has done yet, but we're thinking about doing. And so figured we'd tell you about cool upcoming stuff. Stats for the map. So uh, add this to Crest. Uh, when you look at the map in the in game, you get Sinos and Sino beacons and jumps and pilots in space and pilots docked and all that sort of information. So want to start exposing that, things like the SOV uh, indices and whatnot that are all public in the map, so I eh, may as well start including them there. Um, another market interface, so right now if you want to get market data from Crest, the only choice is to get uh, one, type at a one type ID at a time per region, and you get all of its historical market data. If, however, all you want is a price for all items in the game that are on the market, uh, we're looking at adding just a page that dumps all type IDs and their current average price according to when you hover over it in the client. That, that price just give you a dump of all of them so that you can easily get all the type IDs and their price. Yay! Uh, so 
before I talk about this, I want to be very clear, very clear that this has not been decided. This is just something thinking about and want to get your guys' feedback on. So I went to Zed Killboard and I asked them how many PvP related kill mills did they have for the month of December? Uh, they gave me a number when I say PvP and I made sure they were aware of what I was talking about. Uh, I mean, we're both party on the attacker and the defender. There was a player, right? So there was players involved on both sides of this kill mill. Uh, and then I looked up internally how many we had. Uh, anyone want to guess what that percentage would have been? How many kill mills did Zed Killboard have out of all of the kill mills that were there? 110%. Not quite. Not quite. 80, 50, 30, potato, okay. uh, they had 96.4% of all kill mills for December. Uh, so with that in mind, why don't we just make them all public? Let's just give you a feed delayed by a certain amount of time, whatever we determine, uh, and just give you all kill mills. Uh, because we're horrible people and we like to make fun of people. No. Uh, because, again, it's basically already there and we're just making people jump through hoops to get information that's already there. Uh, so let's just make that a little bit easier for people. Uh, more upcoming things. So uh, this is not necessarily uh, public Crest related. Uh, it's both Crest and uh, the EVE API. Um, and this is mostly just a heads up. We don't have exact details on it, but uh, we, do know, we do know that the slash character industry jobs and slash corp industry jobs endpoints, they're going to be useless after the, some, after the industry expansion. Uh, what we won't do, though, is nuke, we'll leave the endpoints there so that if an application is not handling correctly, the endpoint not being there, it doesn't crash. Uh, we'll leave them there, uh, and we'll add to the e, we'll add to the Eve API um, and Crest information that uh, you'll need for all this kind of stuff. So you'll be able to get whatever the new jobs are called. There'll be a new endpoint for that. You'll be able to get uh, your private corporation facility pricing as well as public facility pricing because the public stuff is public that'll go on crest on public crest but the corporation facility stuff is private we don't want to tell everybody where your bosses are uh so that should kind of be private so that'll be on the eve api uh your installed jobs and um this is a fun one turns out we can very easily very easily now get your blueprint information for you including me and all of that information so we do that very easy for you and we'll expose that uh, the API, the Eve API stuff will probably be done by myself. The public crest stuff, uh, I probably won't be doing. There are some other people in the studio working on that stuff that will do it. They've told me they want to do it. Again, there's no release date on this. It might come after the industry expansion, but they, this is stuff that they do want to add. Um, so, blank slide. Uh, if you were paying attention to my presentation from the very beginning and you saw the list of things I was going to cover, uh, I've covered it all. There's one thing, and before I talk about it, I want to be very, very clear that, like, I don't know exactly how to say it except for I want to crush your expectations. And I just want, like, all of your expectations to be as low as possible right now uh, so that when I put that on the board, you don't freak out. Turns out this is still a thing. The SSO and Authenticated Crest are still a thing. Clearly, we haven't gotten it to you yet, uh, and we have been a little bit slow on that. So what we want to do uh, is take the smallest possible step and get it out the door. And when we talked internally about what the smallest possible step was, we came up with an idea, and then we're like, no, we can go smaller. We can go smaller, we can go smaller. Uh, and so what we came up with uh, and, uh, is we, what we'd like to do is um, a limited trial of the SSO, we want to get the SSO out because it's needed for authenticated crest, uh, and we want to get it out. As we, we want, yeah, we want to get it out. So we we want to pick a couple of websites uh, from you guys that are neutral and open and not provided like that anyone can use, and we want you guys to integrate the SSO. We'll pick a couple of websites. We'll take applications from people. We'll throw a form thread up or something and get anyone that wants to participate in this to apply. We'll pick a few of you, and we'll give you access to the SSO. Uh, this does a few things for us. It means that we can get... The only people who use the SSO right now are us internally. There are going to be things and roadblocks that we run into when we give this to you. By starting small, we can start sorting out those problems. We don't have to have the developer website up. We don't have to do a whole lot of things. We can pick a couple of people. We can give you and talk to you on sort of like a one-to-one -one level and get this stuff sorted out, uh, and then we can go from there. 
I'm not going to talk any about our future plans. There's some steps after this that we want to take. Uh, but this is the first step we want to take because we want to get this thing out the door. Uh, so yes, that's kind of that. And after that is questions. Uh, and because I was at work late one night doing this, uh, I also happened to get this. This is my best score yet. I was very proud of that. Uh, yes, I was quite happy. Anyways, that is my presentation. Uh, we have a bunch of developers up here that are going to come and sit on the couches and the chairs. Uh, and we will take your questions and answer as many of your questions as we can in the next however much time we have left. I'm going to walk by the mic. <laughs> hi, Mike. Uh, hi, I'm uh, CCP Veritas, the technical director of EVE Online. Maybe it's not. Hello, I am CCP Prismax, and I used to be the main API guy before Rainer. Hi, I'm uh, CCP Merovingian. Is that on? Yeah, okay, CCP Merovingian, and I work on Gridlock now. Done a few other things as well. I'm CCP Nullable. Um, I worked on Dust uh, for a while and then back on Eve, so I've got a lot of experience with the Crest stuff. And I'm also heavily involved in the industry expansion, so all the industry APIs and static data dumps and things like that, you can come and talk to me. CCPQC, I was uh, heavily involved in the Crest stuff, making it, and I'm generally happy that Fox 4 is now doing something with it, so I'm here. No, take it, take it to the down. I have a microphone. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, anyone have any questions? I'm going to stand out of the light so I can see people. Um, and I'll just repeat your questions. Yes? Uh, we're going to add history of jobs in the client. The new API that we add should have a history as well. It will only go back, I think we're, we're, we're going about three months at the moment, uh, depending on performance testing of that. Um, and But that will be only for new industry jobs post the expansion. It won't be for the previous jobs. The old APIs for existing jobs will still be there, but we're not changing any of those. So, But the, the new jobs uh, will have a history, both in client and, and hopefully the API. We haven't developed that yet, but that's that would seem reasonable to do. Yeah, yeah, we'll need teams, we'll need the jobs, you'll need some blueprints, stats, and a, a couple of other things. But uh, hopefully we can give you enough of the data that you can get, if not exactly, very close to the final calculated costs and times for jobs. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Repeat and, the sorry, one second. Sorry, yeah, yeah, the question was, uh, uh, can we get the data about how jobs will be calculated per system based on activity before? Uh, the answer is no, because the information we've currently got on that will be entirely irrelevant. Uh, with uh, We're dropping slots, and so the way jobs are going to be calculated now is going to be completely, like, different... Yeah, our, we ran some. Yeah, we ran some modeling internally, but we expect literally day one that the ca the calculations that we have done will be completely different day two. So I, we don't. There's not going to be a lot of benefit in doing that. But we will. I mean, if we've got an API that will drop on that day, there will be some pre. There will be some values filled into them already based on whatever pre-calculated history we've got, but don't expect that to be accurate. I mean, we're, we're going to see a really dramatic shift in costing of industry jobs within the first few days. Um, but after that, we should have all the APIs and, and data available for you. I mean, that's our plan, but uh, like we said, we haven't got date. Sorry, the question was when, 
Yeah, when can we have it? Will it be available before? I yeah, I mean, we're going to try absolutely everything we can to make sure that they're all done beforehand. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if it comes to uh, the feature itself needs work versus the API, obviously the feature takes precedence. But uh, absolutely, we, we know, we realize how much uh, uh, the industry guys rely on third-party tools and spreadsheets and dumps of information. So uh, we know it's we know it's really important. It's on the it's on the plan to get done, and it, hopefully that all gets done before we actually ship it. Yeah, but we'll have to see. You on the far side there. Will it, so your question is, uh, will we be doing any development on mobile platforms for Eve, basically? Uh, <laughs> there we go. Someone else answer, please. Great. <laughs> uh, not at the moment. I mean, uh, it's not a priority at the moment. Um, obviously, I've dabbled in this a little bit, um, but uh, there aren't any plans at the moment unless CCP Veritas has something else he wants to add that I don't know about. Nope. <laughs> this answer is much simpler. Yeah, I'll just jump in and say, you guys make really good mobile apps. So if we can make good endpoints that you make good apps with, then that works for everybody as well. So. Yeah. Uh, like we, like Foxwell said, the right access is something we want to do. We've got a plan to get it done. There are a few steps on it, and there's a there's you know we need some more uh, we need some buy-in and some development effort for it to happen. But that's sort of one of the key goals. Is if we can make this happen, we can we can put an Authcrest API down, drop some endpoints down, then we can have 50 cool Eve apps instead of one CCP app that's you know not getting uh, as much traction on development. So. Hopefully that's what's that's the plan. Hopefully we can get that executed. Right. We're here and then to the back. <laughs> Pretty much, if it requires authentication, uh, so if, if there's something we want to put out that requires authentication, we basically talk to our, we ask ourselves, uh, can it wait until we put authenticated Crest out? If it can wait until authenticated Crest goes out, then it'll wait for that. If not, if we want it out right now, it'll have to go on Eve API because it requires authentication. We don't have that on Crest yet for you guys, right? If it's public information, it'll go on Crest. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yes. All the way at the back there. I'll just say that that's the question is unrelated to the single sign-on service and it's like a complete parallel track and and we have some thoughts in this direction but there's also a bunch of things we would need to solve with API keys and how people use it and so on so it's not really related to third-party developer tools in a, in a direct way the decision for us whether to do that or, or not and so just for the recording, their question was about master accounts, basically. Yep, cool. Uh, yellow jacket, because you haven't asked a question yet. So more market data is the question, basically. Live market data. Yeah. So, so live market data is uh, a, a difficult topic, um, both because that starts to edge towards uh, gameplay, uh, which we w generally want you to be doing through the client, uh, and also because that enables uh, botting, frankly. Um, so it's something we, we would consider doing possibly on a large delay, uh, something like maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that. There's a lot of people we need to talk to internally to CCP as, as far as what we would be uh, allowed to do. Um, I personally would like to see some amount of that data, uh, but heavily delayed. 
um, because if you want the real thing, you, you should go interact with uh, with the market. Uh, something like that. Uh, right, I'm not saying cash, I'm saying delay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I do, uh, I have a special place in my soul for getting rid of that cash that everybody's scraping. Um, I, I hate it vigorously. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I want to uh, put an endpoint like that out. But like I say, there's a lot of considerations we need to uh, have in place for that. Uh, so, you had another question? So, say again, the, the, the question is about the developer license, but... Yeah, absolutely. We just didn't want to like be specific in this. Yeah, sorry. The, just for the recording, the question was: yeah. uh, Will the de will the developer license that people in the SSO trial need to sign be public information? Will it be shared publicly, basically? Right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so so for context, for not everyone who has followed this for for as long as we have been around with it, maybe uh, we started three years ago now. I think we we started work to get a separate license in place for third-party developers that would let us regulate our CCP's relationship with you as a third-party dev separately from you our relationship with you as a player which we felt was necessary before we could give access to some of the bigger capabilities that we can give through authenticated crest for example you're basically getting right access to our server which is a big thing <laughs> and so we started working on a license for how to regulate that, also regulating whether we can license you to make money off your applications, for example, and exactly what that means in our kind of complex environment with ISK and Aurum and, and you know, whether you charge for your app and so on. And so we now have internally a an legal approved version of this developer license that basically contains pretty much the same stuff as last time but with a couple of tweaks based on the last rounds of feedback and next step here which hasn't happened pretty much because I just got back from uh, maternity leave uh, <laughs> is that we want to share that uh, with you again have that discussion make sure that we're happy with this license and that it's an okay thing for you to sign within also the bounds that we need to regulate to protect CCP so we will share it with you fairly soon and then that should be the thing that everyone can sign to get access to the higher level tools so yeah. we've we've made some really good changes to it and and i i hope think and hope that it'll be a thing that you won't hate us for for us making you sign it <laughs> you have another question and then we'll go find some new people So that's the whole point. Yes, it's awesome. That's what we're, that's exactly what we want you to do, right? Um, uh, the players that will use your site don't need to sign any documents with us. Uh, you're you're the one that's deving the site, integrating our SSO into your platform. Good question. That. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you repeat the question, please. <laughs> so the question is whether it would be okay, I guess, in the in the realm of the developer license to federate and like repeat our authentication. Like, could so could someone take the bullet and sign the license and then provide this service to other people who don't want to sign the license, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I 
I think the big reason we would say no to this is that confusion around authentication is really bad from a phishing and, and security point of view. Like when you put input your like any credentials that are around your Eve account, you should never do that any place except on our uh, single sign on service. So any anything, yeah. No, but so anything that would confuse that, I think we would just say a full like stop no to, but there might be some smaller use cases of it. Like, I don't know, we would have to talk specifics, right? But I think that would be the general approach that, uh, yeah, for, from a security point of view, it's a bad idea. Uh, any other questions right in the middle there? Oh, yeah, sorry, you'll go next. Sorry. With no update of the WebGL project, can I now safely abandon all hope for my eight-month-old pull request that it goes without comment there? <laughs> we have someone face-palming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know, is David in the hall or no? Anyone from that team? No, okay. <laughs> don't know, we'll poke it. <laughs> And do you want to walk? We need the microphone for people to answer. Yeah, okay. We'll just repeat. We'll just repeat the question. Yeah. Um, we talked about fittings. Is yeah. it, oh, sorry. The question was, what would be some of the first APIs you'd want with write access uh, on Crest? Is that correct? Yeah. So fittings is a good one. Yeah, uh, anything, yeah, saved fittings, yeah, not actually fitting a ship, but saved fittings. Anything in particular which is um, uh, pushing and pulling uh, data that doesn't directly modify your wealth, so, you know, uh, like moving money around or like changing market orders or stuff, stuff like that, are going to be really good examples of the first things to try, uh, because if they go wrong, it's not catastrophic. You know, if you leak accidentally leak some fittings, or people are confused about how public crest is work, uh, uh, crest is working early on. So uh, anything that can enable, uh, we want to pick things that are going to enable a, a lot of applications and a lot of usages, um, but are fairly safe to try on the first goes. Uh, once we sort of get that happening, and we've, we're happy with how developer sites are going, and legal agreements, and the usage of Crest. Then we can start talking about some of the more uh, difficult uh, ones from a security, like the value of your assets point of view, so money and, and transactions and things like that. So, So this is this is basically an ongoing discussion within CCP. We're still not exactly sure where that line needs to be drawn. Uh, and I just want to back up a little bit to your question, your sort of first question about what endpoints will be available first and whatnot. Uh, when I when we talk about the limited SSO trial, I just because again I'm going back and I want to crush all of your expectations. Uh, we're talking with that just the SSO, no authenticated Crest endpoints, just the SSO. I just want to make sure there's no confusion there, right? So yes, just basically sign in with SSO, get a character ID. Um, so, but did that all answer your question? Okay, cool. Uh, and and I can comment a bit on on the type of like where where roughly the line would be, and it's pretty much that you can say that there's stuff that is preparation and communication and that's pretty very open to api use like the stored fittings bookmarks like all of the the kind of prep and admin stuff and then there's when you actually take action in the world because when you take action in the world when assets move or when you know things change owner or get destroyed or whatever then your actions start to impact other people and then we're in danger territory in terms of botting for example not maybe direct botting through Crest, for example, but say combined client 
like some software that runs both the client and the crest requests, for example. You can get some nasty, really powerful combinations there that could potentially destroy a lot of our gameplay and the integrity of when you take actions that affect other people, it's fair to them that there should be a real human behind uh, those actions that affect them. So that that's really how, that's the general principle that, that we have. Uh, okay, we'll move up and around the back, so start with you. The question was, are we looking into opening the chat for authored crust? It's a really challenging one, and it always comes up. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. No, like, no, definitely, like, no local chat, obviously. Mm. So M maybe, I, but it's technically actually quite challenging. It yeah. seems like it shouldn't be, but it really is. So uh, I would say probably don't expect that soon, especially in the early rollouts of Authcrest. But I mean, we can keep having this discussion for sure. Uh, but the, particularly that one is technically quite challenging. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to CCP Carker about that. Uh, we do it and we're not sure if there's a, a reason for it so we're digging into figuring out who did it and why so that we can talk about it uh, so the, the question though was the chat logs for the Eve client uh, we strip all of the markup from it uh, so if you put a link in and there's text to the link and an actual URL we strip it out uh, and you just get the text so uh, and so talk asking us to include that uh, yes yes anyways uh, yes you If we get Auth Crest out and we can move all of the Eve API stuff over to it, I'd love to take the Eve API servers out back and shoot them. Um, I mean, to, yeah, I, why would we want, we don't want to run two things that do the same thing, especially when one of them is a lot better. Uh, so, yeah. And, sorry, and the question was, do, do we foresee a time when we kill off the Eve API and just go with Auth Crest? To, to be explicitly clear about that, though, even if we get off Crest, and even if everything goes super smooth and awesome, uh, the normal API isn't going anywhere for years. Yeah. Yeah. It will take a very long time until we're in a position where we can nuke it. So don't don't go panicking that yeah. suddenly yeah. your stuff's not going to work. You know, yeah. there's, there's a like lot of tools all. that use it now that people use and we don't want to kill. As a long-term vision, though, yes. But, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so continuing up around the back, yep. Are we out of time? Yeah, we're out of time. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, I believe we're out of time, so I mean, come and find, can we take, I already told him to go, so if we take one more, it's his. Do we have time for we one more? We love you. Do we have time for one more? Yeah. yeah, okay, so one more right at the back there, sorry. Uh, so, as, as CCP Seagull said uh, a few minutes ago, asking about um, like, if we can get it out to you guys and when, uh, we want to get it out to you to review and look at as soon as possible, um, but <laughs> uh, there's no there was no time on it. There's no no time frame there yet. Okay, so uh, we are out of time. So if you have any questions, feel free to come up and find us. We're around FanFest, right? So yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. You're awesome. <laughs>